name of Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated this morning, church. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person sitting next to you that you did well by coming to God's house? God's house. Amen. It is 
serving God that matters in this last days, brothers and sisters. It is the only thing that will give you true, true joy. I'm talking about the money cannot give you true joy. Your clothes, your food, your house will not give you joy. Your spouse cannot give you joy. Your mother or father, your children cannot give you the joy that the Lord gives you. It is a complete joy. It has no attachments. It has no question marks. It has no, you know, doubt. It is so pure. It is a joy that you go on every day knowing that the Lord is with me. How can I ever fail? He will never leave me, nor forsake me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve such a mighty God. I want to praise His holy name. I know I can't give a message, but I want to say thank you, Jesus. I want to give my great God an offering of praise. Hallelujah. He deserves it this morning. He is mighty. He is the one that carries me through. Day by day, He carries each and every one of us through. We are all people that are no longer. But can't we just see how much God has done for us? We never get sick. We well. Even if we were sick in the past, we totally healed. Hallelujah. Isn't this a great God that we serve this morning? I just want to thank Him. What about the many times we almost came so close to death and God saved us this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. This could be a complete servant, Father. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's a mighty God this morning. It could, it could be a servant of servants. Just gratitude to a great God. Gratitude, gratitude. Hallelujah. This morning, <clears throat> This title, the title of my message is Thigh with Joy. <clears throat> and it comes, this, this verse is Deuteronomy 26, verse 1 to 2. And it shall be when thou art come into the land which the Lord God giveth thee for an inheritance, that thou shalt take off the first of all the fruit of the earth, and shall go unto the place which the, the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. Most Christians aren't, aren't very excited about it, but they should be, and they would be if they understood how to do it properly. Scriptural tithing stays our faith. It activates the power of God in our lives when we do it with gratitude and joy, expecting our needs to be met abundantly. In Deuteronomy 26, verse 8 to 9, God told the Israelites exactly what to say when they brought their tithes. He instructed them to acknowledge the fact that he had brought them out of the bondage of Egypt and to say, the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Isn't God bringing us out this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe it's out of sickness, it's out of unemployment, it's out of poverty, it's out of lack, it's out of loneliness. You know what it is. And with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he brought us out in, into this place and have given us this land, even a land that flowed with milk and honey. Amen. What does this have to do with you and me? God has done the same thing for us. He's brought us out of a life of bondage and poverty into a life that flows with the abundance of God. So when you bring your life to the Lord, follow the example set by the Israelites. Make it a time of rejoicing, hallelujah. Make it a time of realizing in you the glorious thing Jesus Christ has done for you. Thank you for delivering you from the land of darkness and scarcity and bringing you into his promised land of plenty. Hallelujah. That's where we dwell. We don't land, dwell in a land of sickness, a land of poverty, hallelujah. Thank Him that it is a land of mercy, a land of joy, a land of peace, and a land of prosperity. Thy in faith, expecting the rich blessings of the land to be multiplied to you. You may soon find it out to be one of the most exciting things you can do. And there's a scripture reading for you, Deuteronomy 26. Hallelujah, can we bow our heads, brothers and sisters? Father, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God. That Lord Jesus, oh Father, that we can give, Lord. 
Let the woman, O oh God, wear the last bit of oil, Lord Jesus, O oh God, and the flower, Lord Jesus. That the Lord Jesus will be given with faith, O oh God, and understanding of Lord Jesus, that you, your word never fails, Jesus, what you said, you, you will bring it to pass. And that God, we receive so much, Lord, that it overflows, Lord Jesus. That we started to take it out of the house and we don't know where to put it, hallelujah. Because God, you gave us so much, our cupboards are full, Father. Oh God, our lives are just getting better and better, Lord Jesus, oh Father. You give us the, what we need, Father. Lord Jesus, you give us the salary we ask for, Father. Lord Jesus, oh God, you give us more than enough, Lord. You bless our children, oh God, they excel in school, Father. You bless us, Lord Jesus, when we are going in and coming out, Father. Oh Lord Jesus, oh God, when we fall, you pick us up, Lord. You send your angels to pick us up, Lord, lest we dash our foot on a stone, Father. Lord, no bones of ours break, oh God, oh Father, we are healthy and strong, Jesus. We serve a living God, oh Father, you bring us to overflow, Father. Oh, say to the better Rabba, say to the better Rabba, Banda. Master Kai Rabba, thank you, Jesus, oh Father. Your word, you never lie, Jesus, oh God. You said it, Jesus, and it comes to pass, Father. We live a victorious life, Father. In times like this, Father, Jesus, oh God, when, Father, the world expects, oh Father, Lord, turn where we see victory, Jesus. We see the fire of God, hallelujah, this last day has been poured out. Oh, Lord Jesus, we live a life of plenty, Jesus. Every day we go to sleep, oh God, we have peace, Jesus, oh Father. We don't worry about tomorrow because God takes care of tomorrow. I want to thank you, Jesus, that that's our life in you, Father, because your word is so true, Father Jesus. How can we neglect so great a salvation? I cannot understand it. I cannot understand how we can neglect so great a salvation when God has given it to us in a plate, when God has just poured it out upon us. Let us take it with faith. Let us do what the word says. Let us not leave certain things out of the world and just take what suits us. But let us do what God says and let us see the overflow in our lives. If he says give your tithes and offerings, let us do that. Let us trust God for job security. Let us trust God for, for financial breakthrough. Let us trust God that he seals our lives with goodness. Hallelujah. That when he gives it to us, he seals it with his glory. His blood has sealed us. His blood covers us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're a great and a mighty God. Father, we put, I put on the whole armor of God over each and every one of us here today, God. Thank you for protecting us, oh Lord Jesus, oh God. And God, we thank you. We have so much to say thank you for, Father. Even for this morning, Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the week ahead of us, Lord Jesus. We go in faith, oh God. We go joyfully to, to wherever we go and we come back joyfully, Father. Our lives are blessed, oh God. God, those that are overworked, oh Father, give them a load of ease on their jobs, oh God, oh Father. Angels of God, I respect you to help them on their, with their workloads, oh Father. Oh God, especially now, I pray for Pastor God. I pray for a load of ease in his life in the name of Jesus. I cover him with the blood of Jesus from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I thank you for good health and strength, oh God. Every word spoken against him, oh Father, I nullify it in the name of Jesus. And words from the doctor, diagnosis, oh God, I trample on them in the name of Jesus. So they have no power over his life. I set him free in the name of Jesus, that he's healthy and well. We have the power to nullify sicknesses. I believe that, I don't care what it may be, but we have the power to nullify, we have the power to nullify cancer. We have the power to nullify AIDS. We have the power to nullify sicknesses of respiratory disorders. Digestive disorders, disorders of the reproductive system, disorders of your kidneys, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus today, if you're suffering from hypertension, from diabetes, I have the power to nullify it. God has given me the authority to nullify it in your life, in Jesus' name. You can take it or you can leave it this morning, in the name of Jesus. I have the power, I have the authority to cast out demons this morning, and I cast them out of the woods in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. A life of victory, Lord. A life of giving your God. Giving to God faithfully to receive from God everything you're hoping for. Everything you're
hoping for. You may be hoping for a spouse. Pray that God gives you one that will serve God with you. Pray that God will give you a, a vehicle that will be road worthy. Pray that God will give you enough for this life of yours. And more than if you are a person that can give, God will give you more that you can give so much. You have too much. It becomes claustrophobic that you have to give it out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? You are so mighty, Jesus, oh God. As I even stand before you, I honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name.
God, in the life of Christ Jesus. Lord God, may rise within us. We may decrease in Christ in the cruise. We thank you this morning, O God. It's not about us, but it's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus, what Jesus has done for us. So Lord Jesus, surrender our hearts and our lives to you. We offer our lives to you as a living sacrifice, living epistles, being read by men, written by you, O God. We thank you so much. Your blessed name we pray and the people of God say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be in church. Amen. Amen. So good to be in church. Welcome in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for being good soldiers. Soldiers of the cross. Christian soldiers. Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation. Hallelujah. Thank God for redemption. Thank God for redemption. Because of redemption, we are redeemed. And because we are the redeemed, we say so. Somebody say so. But it means that I say what God says. Be it unto me according to your word, O God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You didn't let the cold keep you away from his house. You braved the cold. God will honor that. Amen. Hallelujah. I say God will honor that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we serve God, it's not based on our comfort or what is com what we're comfortable with. Amen. So I want to read to you this morning, we're going to go to the book of, the Gospel rather of Mark, St. Mark's Gospel in the 11th chapter, and I want to speak to you about changing what you see. Changing what you see. You know when we read in the book of Genesis, we find that God created man in his image and in his likeness. In the image and likeness of God created he man. You've been created in his image and in his likeness. Now we know about the fall of man in the garden. But we also know that Jesus Christ came to buy us back. Amen. Hallelujah. That we are now once again reconciled with God. We can commune with God. We can have fellowship with God. Amen. And when the Bible says that you were created in the image and the likeness of God, what God is trying to get across to us is that we were created to live, to walk, to talk, and to function like God. Amen. That's how you were created to be. Now, let me share with you something, is that our God is not weak. Amen. Our God is not weak. Amen. Our God is not sick. Amen. Come and talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, He is the head of the church, which is His body. Amen. The church is not the building that we find ourselves in, but rather the church is you and I, the believers in Christ. Amen. We are the church. Amen. Tell somebody, you are the church. You are the church. Tell yourself, I am the church. I am the, church. I am the body of Christ. I am the body. He is my head. And you say, my head is not weak. My head is not, head is not sick. So how can you be sick if the head is not sick? Amen. Come and talk to me. You've been created in his image and in his likeness. And I want to share with you from
from Mark's Gospel chapter 11 and we're going to go from verse number 12. Now many of us know the account of the fig tree. And verse 12 says this, Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Somebody say Jesus was hungry. Jesus. They come out of Bethany and Jesus was hungry. And seeing what seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. Jesus says, No man cometh unto the Father except he come through me. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus brothers and sisters in Christ, is the best example to follow in this Christian life. Amen. The best example to follow in your Christian life and your Christian walk is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. And He came to reveal to us the life of God Amen. in man. Jesus Christ, His life demonstrates what happens when divinity takes possession of humanity. You didn't get that. When divinity takes possession of humanity, when his divine nature takes possession of your natural nature, you no longer are a natural being, you are a supernatural being. Hence we find the Apostle Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Another translation says he's a new species of being altogether. A new species of being. He's a new creation. All things have passed away. The natural has passed away. All things have become new. The supernatural has become a part of you. The supernatural has become second nature to you. When you look at the life of Jesus from his birth, talk to me somebody, from his birth, right through to his death, to his crucifixion, his death, his resurrection, it's a life of the supernatural. His birth was supernatural. His life was supernatural. Talk to me, somebody. His death was supernatural. It was supernatural because, listen, he gave up divinity and he took on humanity, the frailty of humanity. He took it on the cross. He took it on himself. That was supernatural. God Becoming like man. God taking on himself. Sinful. God is holy. A holy God giving up his holy nature. A divine exchange. That is supernatural. His resurrection from the dead. That is supernatural. His ascension to heaven. That is supernatural. The pulling out of his spirit. That is supernatural. Guess what? The Holy Spirit has come, brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit has come. Praise God. And he's being poured out. Yes, these are the last days. We see it. The stage is set. We see it. The return of Jesus is much closer today than it was yesterday. Are you hearing me, somebody? And even in that, the Lord says in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Come on, talk to me. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Are you hearing me, somebody? It doesn't matter what's happening in the world. It doesn't matter what's happening with the people around you. But I'm here to tell you this morning that with the Holy Spirit, things are working for your good. Talk to me. Hallelujah. He came to show us divinity in humanity. Amen. The Bible says, yeah, he was hungry. They came out of Bethany. He was hungry. He saw a fig tree afar off and thought, okay, if I get to this fig tree, I'll get something to eat. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. He came to it, he found nothing but leaves. The Bible goes on to say, for it was not the season for figs. Amen. Hmm. It was not the season for figs. And he saw the leaves from afar off and he was hungry. 
And when he came to it, he finds nothing, but only leaves. But even though it wasn't the season for figs, he expected figs. In response, watch, Jesus responds to that fig tree. He doesn't just keep quiet. He doesn't cry and say, oh no, but I'm hungry. What am I going to eat? I'm starving. And here's a tree that promised me fruit, but I can't, there's no fruit. He doesn't cry about it. He responds to it. And in response, Jesus says to the fig tree, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Mm. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Jesus said this purposely. He said it so that his disciples could hear. That's like when God announced to Abraham and to Sarah that Sarah would be with child. Sarah was in the tent. But God spoke in such a way that Sarah would hear it on the inside. Amen. That's why when God said it, Sarah thought it was a joke and she started laughing and she says, my woman, at my age, how can I still be? And look at my husband Abraham. Can the child? And then she comes out and God says, why did you laugh? And she still says, she still lies to God and she says, I didn't laugh. But God said it on purpose. Because God released a word that she would hear that would bring faith. Faith for her to conceive. Faith for her, come and talk to me. Faith for her to believe that this thing can happen so that she can conceive something. And then God says, about this time next year, I will visit you. You see, there's something that happens when you hear the word of God. The word of God, the Bible says, the word is seed. It's a seed of faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Every time you hear the word of God, faith is coming. You are sowing seed into your life. And you keep on watering it because how do you water it? By meditating on it. By confessing it. By praying over it. That's how you do it. And eventually you find it comes to pass. In due time it comes to pass. Amen. Now Jesus sees a fig tree with leaves. And he comes to it expecting to find fruit. The Bible says, but it was not the season for figs. Yeah. That means Brothers and sisters in Christ. Hmm. The Bible says you must be ready in season and out of season. It was not the season for figs. But you know what? You can change the season in your life. That is what he's demonstrating, is that you can change the season in your life. He says to that fig tree, let no one ever eat fruit from you ever again. When he said that, it was a settled matter. Amen. Verse 20 says, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree drying up from the roots. It was overnight this thing happened, man. Dried up from the roots. And Peter, watch Peter, remembering. The Bible says, Verse 14, his disciples heard it. His disciples heard it, but only one remembered. You see, there are many, listen, many hear the word, but very few remember the word. You got it? Very few remember. And only Peter, Peter remembers and he says, Rabbi, teacher, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. The fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answers Peter and says to them, to his disciples, have faith in God. Amen. 
highlight that. Have faith in God. Four words. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. In other words, he's saying, have the God kind of faith. Have God's faith. Have God's faith. Have the very faith that God has. For surely I say to you, whoever, does he say that only pastors, only preachers, does he say only a select few? He says whoever. Who is whoever? Whoever is anybody. No qualification. Come and talk to me, somebody. Yeah. If you are a whoever, that means you qualify for this thing. Yeah. He says, whoever does what? Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Whoever says to this mountain, very often when we read the scripture, we tend to think of the mountain as being an obstacle that you can speak to and tell it to be moved. But when you read the scriptures, you find that mountains are significant of kingdoms. Mountains resemble kingdoms. Mountains resemble kingdoms. Remember when Jesus was tempted by the devil, Satan took him up to a mountain, a high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms, all the mountains. He says, all this I will give you because it was given to me. It was never given to him. He stole it from Adam. It was never his. You see, when the, the, the very fact he says they were given to me, <laughs> he's acknowledging it, it was never intended for him. Amen. But this is what I want to get across to you is that when he says you'll speak to this mountain, mountain signifying the kingdom of God within you. The sea is the nations of the world. The sea in the Bible is it's significant of the nations of the world. That you can go with the kingdom in you. And when you release the kingdom into the nations, nations will change. Nations will change. Come and talk to me. You have within you the kingdom of God. Talk to me, somebody. A kingdom that cannot be shaken. Come and talk to me. Holy Mount Zion, that is who we are. We are inhabitants of the kingdom of God. And we carry within us the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the rule of God. It's the government of God. And listen, Jesus understood it. Wherever Jesus went, he, he, Jesus taught and ministered on the kingdom. And the kingdom manifested. Talk to me. When he spoke to that fig tree, he was releasing the kingdom, the power of the kingdom. That listen, I can change the season, but the fact that you don't want to change, no one will ever eat from you again. Amen. It's like somebody, you know, wakening up to this, to the truth. That Jesus has healed you. That Jesus has set you free. That you'll no longer go and say, yeah, you know, this is a genetic lineage. In our family, we always, we all have this genetic, no, listen, the genes have changed for me in Christ. No longer will I ever eat of that fruit. No longer will my children eat of that fruit. Or my children's children eat from that fruit. Are you hearing me, somebody? The genes change. Hallelujah. You have the power and the ability to change it. How? He says you'll say to his mouth. In other words, you speak kingdom. You're a kingdom-minded person. 
You speak the kingdom. You live in the kingdom. You walk in the kingdom. You talk the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, whoever says to this mountain, be removed. You know, mountain, the Greek word, if you look at the Greek word for mountains, the word oros. When we think of oros, we think of, you know, oros juice. No. I'm not talking about oros juice, the oros man. Oros. Maybe that's why they got oros so big. Because it's a mountain. But the Greek word oros, it means to lift up and bring. Amen. See that? To lift up and bring. That's what it means. Mountain is high. To lift up and bring. Faith lifts up and brings. That's what faith does. Lifts up and brings. Says, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt. In other words, he's not double-minded in his heart, but he believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Jesus said to the fig tree, what did he say? Let no one ever eat from you ever again. And what happened? He got what he said. You see that? What you say is what you get. And people don't realize that. People don't realize that. Oh yeah, I believe God, I trust God. But how's your speech? How's your speaking? If your speaking is poverty, you'll experience poverty. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Faith. In other words, living by faith, it's an experience. It's an experience. How did you receive Jesus? How did you become a new creation being? You received Christ by faith. You received what he did on your behalf by faith. And nobody can convince you otherwise. You know in your heart what you believe. Now, that same faith, you hold on to that faith. When sickness comes, that very same faith will get you healed. When challenges come, that very same faith will get you through. Amen. By faith, Hebrews 11 verse 3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed, the worlds were put together, how? By the word of God. Amen. Let me share with you something in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 20. My son, Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. You see, the word of God can bring healing to your flesh. The word, the word of God can bring healing to your finances, healing to your marriage, healing to your children. Talk to me. In other words, we are to store up the Word of God in our hearts. When the Word of God is stored up in your heart, now you are able to go forth. And as you're speaking the Word, it's a kingdom word. You're releasing the kingdom. Jesus says the kingdom of God does not come by observation, nor shall they say, no, yea, it is, they it is, no, for the kingdom is within you. You have the kingdom within you. That means, brothers and sisters in Christ, God didn't just save you for saving you safe so that you can live for yourself. No, he saved you so that you could go and save others. 
He brought you into the kingdom and placed the kingdom within you so that you can release the kingdom into others. When others are sad, you bring them joy. Come talk to me. When they sick, you bring them healing. When they left without hope, you bring them hope and you bring them faith. You bring life to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. You have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, watch it. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you have them. When you pray, believe that you receive. See, that's the problem with many people. They cannot believe. They fail to believe. You start doubting. You remember Jairus, the man Jairus, the leader of the synagogue Jairus, whose daughter was ill. You remember the, that account? Jairus, also in Mark's Gospel, chapter number 5, we find that Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, he comes to Jesus. And he informs Jesus that his daughter is ill. She's not well. And while he's still speaking with Jesus, and they're on their way, there are people who come from his house and they say to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Why are you troubling the master? Jairus, your daughter's dead. It's too late. Many people can tell you that, oh, it's too late. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, with God, it's never too late. There's no such a thing as too late with God. God is always on time. The Word of God is always on time. You don't give up. You don't stop believing. You believe that God is going to come through. If God said it, that settles it. God is going to come through. Hallelujah. What God has promised, it will come to pass. When they're telling Jairus, they say to Jairus, they say, Oh, why troubles thou the master? Why troubles thou the teacher? It's too late. Jesus looks at Jairus and he says, Do not be afraid, Amen. only believe. Amen. In other words, Jairus, don't answer them. You see, sometimes in your life things may happen, but once you've said it, once you've released the word, don't speak against the word. Once you've said it, I think I shared it this week, shut your mouth. Once you've released faith, listen, how did God create the heavens and the earth? How did God create everything? How did God create? God spoke faithful words. Words that were full of faith. And when God spoke, he believed that what he said would come to pass. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree, he believed what he said would come to pass. He knew, I'll go past there tomorrow, there will be nothing on that tree. Not even the leaves. You see, once you've spoken, keep quiet. And let faith do the rest. You see, Jesus was telling Jairus, Jairus, you came to me in faith. And you released words of faith. And you said to me that your daughter's ill at the point of death. You came to me for healing because you believe in my ability to heal her. Amen. So don't believe the, the, the words of the people. Believe in my ability. Amen. You see, God wants you to believe his ability. Believe in his ability. Believe in him, not your circumstances. Remember the centurion who came to Jesus? He says, my servant is sick. And Jesus says, I will come and heal him. Jesus didn't say, no, I won't. He says, I will come and heal him. God is always willing to come into your situation. You must never get to the point where you think, you see, that's the problem. People always think, oh, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy. I don't qualify. No, you qualify freely by His grace. Hallelujah. You qualify. His grace has qualified you. Hallelujah. 
His grace has qualified you. Praise God. Romans chapter 4 verse 25 tells us that Jesus was delivered for our trespasses. But he was raised for justification. You see that? So you can say that. My trespasses, my shortcomings, Jesus was delivered for that. And he was raised for my justification. He is risen, therefore I'm justified. Therefore I'm qualified. If I'm justified, I'm qualified. Jesus says to the centurion, I will come and heal you. And what does the centurion say? He says, Lord, I too am a man of authority. I say to this servant, go, and he goes. I say, come, and he comes. You see, the centurion knew the power of words. He knew the power of words, and there's authority with words. He says, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only say the word, and my servant will be healed. Amen. And Jesus marveled at his faith. Amen. You see, faith moves the heart of God. If you want to get God's attention, it is faith. I shared that with you last week with Marty Mayers. It is faith that will get his attention. Amen. You see, when you're speaking words of faith, what you are speaking, you are speaking God over your situation. God over your circumstance. It doesn't matter what season. You listen, you know, there are many people who think, oh, you know, this is my season for drought, you know. Listen, you are an evergreen tree. We go and we listen. If, if that's your mentality, go read your Bible intelligently. The very first psalm tells you, you are a tree planted by the waters, bearing fruit in its season. It means whether it's winter, you're bearing fruit. Whether it's And lack is of the curse. You are no longer cursed. You are blessed. Come and talk to me. Amen. Jesus bore the curse so that the blessing may come upon you. Amen. You are blessed along with believing Abraham. Amen. You gotta believe that you are blessed. Amen. Oh no, this is my season. Season where you're going to cry and feel sorry for yourself. No. You can change the seasons. Jesus got to that fig tree. It wasn't the season for figs. But he expected to get figs. And that tree was stubborn. He didn't want to give up. Come on. He went there expecting to receive something. And when he got there, that tree didn't deliver on his expectation. So he cursed it. You can change the seasons. You can change the picture of your life. You can change it how? By the word of God. Man, you gotta speak the word, speak the word, speak the word, speak the word. You know, sometimes people name the children, but they don't understand the meaning of it. You know what I mean? Because it sounds nice. You know, when we named our children, we prayed over those names. We named Kurt, Kurt Samuel. Kurt means peace. Samuel asked of God. We named Joshua, Joshua Uriah. Joshua, Jehovah saves. Uriah, the light of God. So that, listen, when we're in our house and we're calling our children, what are we I think you just went off your heads like that. Every time you call your child, every time I say Joshua in my house, I'm saying Jehovah says. Every time I say Kurt, I'm saying peace. And you know when you, you know when they've done something and you call them by all their names? And I say, Kurt Samuel, I'm saying peace, I stop God. Joshua, you're right, Jehovah is saying, but God is alive. Come on. 
I want to share this. I need to share this. Someone sent this thing to me. Said, uh, don't give your children Bible names without giving them Bible lessons. This is what the person said. Don't give your children Bible names without giving them Bible lessons. Because last night I was robbed by Abraham. I thought so, so <laughs> We've got to train up our children in the ways of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, you can speak to this mountain. Say, be cast into the sea. How did you can release? Listen. You know, everybody speaks about what's happening in our country, what's happening in the world, all the hatred, all the crime. How about getting to a place where, I mean, look, look at our politicians. This good example, our politicians and our youth are watching these people. But you see how they behave and the speech that they... You know, it really... They speak about hate speech, but the way they speak, they say what they want to, nothing happens. That's hate speech. It's hatred. We say, you know, our country is full with hatred, full with rage. How about us releasing forgiveness? Amen. Release forgiveness into the nations. Amen. Release love into the nations. Amen. Lord, I thank you for your blood. By your blood, I see the nations righteous. with joy. Amen. I see them experiencing the peace of God. Amen. What am I doing when I say that? The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Start releasing the kingdom into the nations. When you pray, pray that way. to be your God 
you know, there's not, there's no hope. Talita Kumi. I say, listen, I say to you, arise. When Jesus spoke to them, come on, talk to me, somebody. He got in there, there was a corpse. And he said, little girl, I say to you, arise. I say, arise. You know, I love the word of God. The prophets of old, you always read. When the prophets of old came, when they came, they always said, Thus says the Lord. Amen. Thus says the Lord. Amen. Jesus comes and he says, I say. Amen. He's the Son of God. He said, I say. And then he tells his disciples, Whatsoever you ask in my name. Amen. In other words, whatsoever you ask as representing me, my name, and who I am. Whatever you ask as representing who I am, what I can do, whatever you ask, it shall be done for you. The name of Jesus has been given to the church. Are we using it? Because when you understand who he is, you know, there are, listen, there are many people, they serve God because of what they expect God to do for them. They serve God because of what, you know, God can do for them. But that's the wrong motive. You serve Him because of who He is. You love Him because of who He is. Who He is is more important than what He can do. know who he is and because I know who he is I say what he is to me he is my righteousness he is my provider he is my deliverer he is my sanctifier he is my advocate he is my judge he is my lord he is my king. Amen. When I'm in battle, he is my battle axe. Amen. When it seems like I'm in the midst of the, of the ocean and every other waves are tossing to and fro, he is my anchor. Amen. Nothing will move me. Amen. He is my rock on which I stand. Amen. No wind will blow me off course. He's the one who caused water to come from the flinty rock. He did it for Israel. He'll do it for me. Remember in the book of Numbers 11 how Israel complained. They complained about the flesh pots of Egypt. They forgot about everything. You see, there are those who forget. They forgot about everything else that God had done for them. Then they get to a place where they start complaining, oh, there's no more meat. And God says to Moses, I'll let them eat meat until it comes out of their noses. You serve a God who can do exceedingly abundantly, above all that you would ever imagine or think. Yes, one door may close in your life, but that doesn't mean that's the end of your story. One door may close, but God is opening ten others. One person may have left you, God is bringing you ten others. Are you hearing me, somebody? God does exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever imagine or think. He says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 10, verse 8, Paul mentions there the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith. It says the word is near you. 
very dead in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith that we preach. Moses gets to the Red Sea, cries unto God. God says, Moses, God speaks to you this morning. He says, Ronnie. He says, Felix, Ronnie. Use what I gave you. Use what I gave you. That is powerful. God is telling you, use what I gave you. You see, sometimes you can receive a gift and you'll have it in your house and it's supposed to make your life easier. Let me pick on ourselves. I love cooking. I, I really love spending time in the kitchen. I love it. Many times, I'll cut onions and the tears will flow. And I keep on cutting. The worst time is when I have to make pickle fish. Because there's so many of them onions. And it's just one tissue after another. And one day we open the cupboard. God says, listen, dummy. For your wedding, somebody gave you something that you can put in this thing, put an onion in, and it will do the job for you. No tears, no pain, no labor. You see, and when I discovered that thing, I put it in. It's a joy now to chop the onion. But so it is with what God has given us. And God doesn't have any favorites. He doesn't save the one more than the other one he saved. Now that you more saved than that one, or you more holy than that one, no. We are all equal in the sight of God. We are all equal. It doesn't mean that God will hear the one's prayers more than him. You understand, he hears all our prayers. You've got to come to him in faith. It's your faith that makes you whole. It's your faith that makes you well. It's your faith that gets the job done. You see, when you're in Egypt, you find that God does so many things for you. When you first became born again, you find that every day you had a testimony. Every day. You met someone, hey, you know what the Lord done for me. Hey, you know what the Lord done. But you know what? God brings you out from Egypt. And then he brings you to the Red Sea. When you get to the Red Sea, God is telling you now, you've seen my ability, what I've done in Egypt. Now I'm living and abiding within you. Now it's time for you to part the sea. It's time
fellowship with God. You see, sometimes wrong associations will tell you what you can't do, what is difficult, and what this and that and that and that and that. But you want to spend time with God. Jesus spent time in the temple. He spent time in the temple. He spent quiet time alone. Listen, God dwells within you and I. You've got to spend time with Him. Spend time with Him. As you spend time with Him, faith starts to come. And when you start believing, you find that when things around you look bleak, you just let open and those rivers, those rivers, those rivers, those rivers, those rivers, those rivers of living waters begin to flow and brings life into circumstances. Brings life, brings life, brings life. You see, in life, you get life givers and you get undertakers. Some people, many people I should say, are undertakers. All they knew, all they know was to bury people. What's the job of an undertaker? It's to bury people. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He only comes to bury. But Christ has come to give you life that you might have it in the bottles. We have the life giver within us. We sang that song, I'll never turn back. I'm never going back. Because you know, you experience something that they were born again. And that something is so precious to you. There's nothing in the world that can compare to what you experience. To explain it is difficult unless you experience it for yourself. That true peace which only God can give. That true love which only God can give. Give life. You have the life given within you. Give life. Moses said to Israel, I set before you today blessing and cursing, life and death. Choose life that you may live. My question to you is, what are you going to choose? The words that were sent to bury you, to rob you of reaching your full potential in Christ, or are you going to choose the words of life? Which is the words of faith. Faith picks up. Faith lifts up. Faith will lift you up from wherever you are and translate you to where God wants you to be. Because God operates with faith. Faith will take you out. Do not go through the tribulation. 
faith will take you out. You will not experience the tribulation. That's the same faith that takes you out of the fires of this life. That's the same faith that causes you to stand. That's the same faith that makes you different to the rest of the world. The people ask, how can you do this? How can, how can, how can? It's by faith. I've experienced it. I'm telling you. I've experienced it. What faith can do. Things I thought impossible. How faith made it possible. And it's not just for me. It's for everybody. Start speaking. Speak the word. I say speak the word. Amen. Don't doubt. When you say it, that settles it. When I pray about it and I say amen, that was it. With me? That was it. Smith Speaklesman prayed for a woman with a goiter. He prayed for that woman. And every meeting they had that week, she would go and she'd pray, you know, and she'd get prayed, get prayed. And the goiter that grew became, big, became bigger and bigger and bigger. And the next year, when he went to that same place for a meeting, the goiter was more than double its size. And when they were giving up testimonies, that woman purposed in her heart. She said, he prayed for me last year. And when he said, amen, that was it. Yeah. So when they called for testimonies, that woman went up and she said, I'm here to give a testimony last year. Brother Smith, he prayed for me. I had a goiter and I was healed. As she said that, the people were looking at her, some were laughing. But as she said that, that goiter that was double in size and popped. Come on, you gotta give God praise. You gotta give God praise. That means in spite of what I see, I know he has done it. Faith is in my heart that says he has done it. And that is what I'm going by, what he has done. Hallelujah. Amen. We sing that song in the church. I mean, you've been to how many services? You sing that song. Look what the Lord has done. And then when the, when the challenges come, it's, oh Lord, what now? No, 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 no. Oh, let's see what the Lord has done. The Lord has delivered you. The Lord has brought you through. Talk to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time you started saying and just keeping quiet. Just acting. Hallelujah. There's a man of God who once said something. He said, faith it until you make it. F-A-I-T-H. Faith it until you make it. Faith it until you make it. I don't care what's happening around me. I don't care what I see, what I hear. I'm going to faith it. I'm going to make it. Can you come on, stand, 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 stand to your feet. Just say it. Say, I'm going to fake it until I make it. I'm going to fake it until I make it. Come on, say, I'm a man of faith. I'm a woman of faith. Come on, talk to me. I'm a person of faith. I have faith on the inside of me. Mountain moving faith. I'm a, I'm a citizen of heaven. The kingdom of God is within me. I have the power and the ability of God within me. I have the spirit of God within me. I operate in the fullness of the spirit. The apostle Paul was speaking, when I come, I might come with the fullness of the blessing. Do you know how blessed you are? Do you know how blessed you are? Hallelujah. You're so blessed. So blessed that you can call on God at any time. You don't need to go buy a plane ticket to go and worship God somewhere. 
other side of the earth. Your God is all over. He's right there where you are.
Amen. 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 Your business, God is bringing the customers, He's bringing the business, He's bringing the customers. He's studying, He's bringing the results, He's working on your results. But you've got to partner with Him and you've got to do your part too. It's no use. You don't study the pastor, please pray for me. You've got to study too. And even while you're studying, God's working on your job. You may be in an uncomfortable place where you are now. You don't like the job. Listen. Wow. God said to Adam, be fruitful and multiply. That means it doesn't matter what job you have, it doesn't matter which place you work in. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful to your boss. Be fruitful to your employer. And multiply your employer. As your employer multiplies, so will you multiply. Jacob went to Laban's house. And what happened? Everything about Laban multiplied. anointing of multiplication the anointing of multiplication be fruitful and multiply fill the whole earth with the knowledge and the glory of God come on every eye closed every head bowed Father we just thank you Thank you that you are so close to us. Thank you that you are mindful of us. Thank you that you are in partnership with us, Lord. Thank you so much for the awesome privilege and awesome honor that we have, Lord God, to partner with you. Thank you, Lord, oh God, it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, oh God. Thank you, oh Lord, oh God, for the ability of God that is at work with in us and work through us and at work around us. You are the Lord our God in our midst, O Lord. And we acknowledge you as the one and only true God. Thank you, Lord, O God, that with you there's no shadow of turn. Thank you that what you did for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Thank you that you do not change. Thank you that you remain the same. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you so much. Thank you that we have faith. Thank you so, so much. By faith we overcome. By faith we prevail. By faith, O oh Lord God, we stand. So much. Thank you in advance for what you're still going to do. Because we know, we know, Lord, according to your word, the works were finished from the foundation of the earth. Thank you that you purposed our birth. Thank you that you purposed our lives. Thank you that you see us as your special creation. I pray for each and every person in this place. I pray for those that are under the influence of Lord God of our voice via this broadcast. I pray that you touch them. I pray, Lord God, that the dew of heaven will water them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, Lord, that you bless your people, that you keep them safe. I plead your blood, Lord Jesus, upon your church. Thank you, no sickness, no disease, no virus, no plague shall come near our dwelling places. Thank you, Lord, O oh God. We can dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under your shadow. Thank you so much, O oh God, for your word which governs us, protects us which has been declared over our lives concerning us. 
now in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the grace of the life of each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' magnificent name, the people of God say, Amen. Taking giant leaps of faith. Taking giant leaps of faith. Hallelujah.